we are live, ladies and gentlemen, we are live, let's do it. Welcome to this week's weekly beer and video review show with Travel Man Dan, a.k.a. Danny Soleil. Welcome everybody, how we doing? Hope you guys are having a good day. Thanks for joining me. Today's going to be a lot of fun. We got some really cool beers we're going to go ahead and review. We got some really fun topics we're going to talk about. And if you're new to this show, that's exactly what we do here on the weekly beer and video review show with Danny Soleil. Is we go ahead and we talk about last week's video that came out on my channel. And we preview the videos that are coming out in the upcoming week. Um, while we do that, we enjoy it and we sip on two beers and we talk about it, we review it, we give you guys um, suggestions, we give you um, a little bit of perspective of what it's like as I'm slugging down these bottles of beer. It's a pretty loose show, but we're having a good time. And in between that, we go ahead and we talk about some topics that happened to me or maybe something that, uh, well, came across my wavelength this week and we just kind of just have a good time. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Thanks for joining me on this show and I'm gonna go ahead and bring out the first beer, okay. If you saw last week's video, we kind of made a snafu, um, an, an error, um, and there is a lot of errors on these live streams, and that's okay. I'm out here doing it, I'm out here practicing, I'm out here bringing you the show because I love to do this, and I love when you guys tune in to me. If you've ever got anything to say, just throw it down in the comments or pop it up right now, and well, I definitely appreciate it. But last week, let me go ahead and turn this heater down here. <laughs> got a little space heater going on in the studio and it is freaking hot man um okay so if you tuned in last week uh basically i went ahead and previewed a few beers that we were going to try and then when the actual show started it was two different beers not sure what the hell happened not sure how it happened um but i went back and i analyzed what exactly had happened and what i did was put the two beers and this little thing right here, and I had it out like this. When I pulled them out, made a little Instagram preview video, whatever, yada, yada, yada. Two other beers were into this little jacket over here. Then what I did is somehow as I was putting it back in, I turned it, right? Not knowing, unbeknownst to me did I know, when I went ahead for the actual show, the live weekly and beer video review show with Danny Soleil, I went ahead and grabbed the bottles of beer. Huh? You with me on this? Now I grabbed two different bottles of beer at that point. Still a fun show. We had a good time. But now I'm going ahead and I'm going to bring you those beers that we talked about. And, well, they were the same company that we did last week. That's right, we're talking about Ballast Point. Ballast Point is what we're doing today, and this is the Manta Ray. I don't know what that means, but um, that's the Manta Ray song, I guess. The hair's getting a little jacked up over here. <laughs> All right, so this is what we're doing. We're doing the Ballast Point. If you don't know, Ballast Point is a brewery in San Diego, California. All right, it is... Um, deliciously looking label check it out we got a giant manta ray flying through the air okay pops out of the water and just says what's up everybody this is my shot for the beer bottle all right and um well it's uh it's an action photo so that's pretty cool as you can see really cool label now this beer is going to be pretty strong because it is a double ipa double all right and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it. It is 8.5%. Okay, pretty strong uh, bottle of beer here. It is later in the night. Usually I tend to do this. Well, the last couple of months, maybe the last uh, six months, I do it right after the Bills play, which is usually 1 o'clock Eastern, 10 o'clock Pacific time. And then we do about 3 o'clock. I never know what time it's going to be, but I will say this. We're going to be always doing the live weekly beer and video review show with Danny Soleil on Sunday. So tonight's a little later, and I'll get into you, I'll get into that why it's a little bit later. But first, let's go ahead and crack open this Manta Ray. <sighs> oh, maybe. All right, so right away, when I crack it open... It's got a strong smell to it. Usually IPA's got that really 
uh, piney kind of smell to it, uh, that hoppy kind of smell, and then that hoppy flavor. But the double IPA is even more strong of a smell. And, well, the Manta Ray is no different. Now, last week, if you remember, gave the Ballast Points some pretty good review. So let's go ahead and see how this Manta Ray stacks up against some of the other ones. Ooh. Ooh, that's smooth. Oh, that's so good. That is really good. It's tasty. It's hearty. It's robust. And all together, it's smooth. It's really smooth. Just like all the other beers at Ballast Point I've reviewed. Boy, is it smooth. Really smooth. You know, sometimes when you get these IPAs, they can be a little bit of a... You know, throw you back a little, but no, this one is this one is really good. First swig is delicious, and um, yeah, I'm I'm liking the way that's tasting. So we're gonna enjoy that 8.5 percenter of that manta ray. So, like I said before, <clears throat> moving on, on. The reason why we're doing it so late today, and you're probably watching the Oscars. If you're not watching this, it's either one or the other. I mean, that's the only things that are going on right now, right? You got the Oscars, Academy Awards, and my live YouTube beer review show. So you're either here or there. So uh, there it is. That's why we're going a little bit later. But um, hopefully that if you uh, aren't watching live and you decide to tune in the Oscars, that you go ahead and you check out this and, and you're seeing it later. But that's okay. Right, because there's still lots of goodies going on. The real reason why I'm going so late is I just came back from one of the coolest places I've ever been, one of the most unique experiences, one of the funnest times I've had. Um, well, I it really just felt the energy of this place. And um, what I'm talking about is I went and saw the U.S. women's national soccer team play Canada for the championship to go ahead and um, be awarded into the Olympics. Wow. And the U.S. won 3-0. Hey, USA, USA, USA. All right, we kicked some butt. But um, it was down at Dignity, Dignity Health Field, which was, I believe, the old Home Depot Center. I don't know. They change every three years with the new sponsors. So weird. But um, it's where the, the home of the LA Galaxy. And I'd never been to a soccer or a football game. Um, man, it was awesome. Really amazing. I mean, it was so cool. And um, I was able to sit uh, pretty close to the girls and, and, and uh, just seeing how skilled and, and, and the technique that it takes to play the game of football and um, it is just it was an amazing experience and the fact that the US won again and shut them out I mean they're amazing what we're witnessing right now if you don't know is the US women's soccer team is one of uh, the most I don't know how to say iconic epic amazing teams of any sport across the board male female uh, basketball uh, baseball uh, hockey whatever you want to say the women's uh, women's national team for like the last like eight years are absolutely amazing and I feel honored to have seen it it was an amazing game I loved it um, I like uh, I, I really like uh, uh, press. Yeah, I, I, she's just really cool, and she's just really, uh, she's really neat, and like, uh, I like enjoy watching her. They had a couple other girls that I really don't know. I don't know any of the girls, but uh, congratulations, ladies, women, girls, whatever you want to call it. The U.S. Women's National Team is freaking amazing. The energy is great over there at the stadium because it's not like this mega huge stadium that I'm used to like where the Buffalo Bills play but um it's more of a smaller there were 17,000 people there um it was just a really really fun experience and I was so happy to be a part of it and uh yeah on to the Olympics, I guess, or off to Tokyo. So looking forward to it. And now, from this point on, I will follow the U.S. women's soccer team. You know, I'll just follow them. You know, that's just, I, I was just inspired. You got a fan. You, you, tonight, you've gained a fan. And I will um, 
Well, I will watch you with uh, the same vigor and the same passion that I have with all my sports teams. So thank you, thank you, and congratulations. This manta ray is for you. And um, I don't know, maybe one day I'll get a chance to meet one of them soccer players and we'll have a beer. <laughs> Wow, I'm just really amazed at how smooth these double IPAs are by Ballast Point. That last sip was really good. Had a bit of a, a little tiny bite to it, but almost like a like a chocolate flavor to it. Um, sometimes when you get into like the stouts and, 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 and those really thick black beers, you get almost like a little juicy kind of sweet chocolate taste. And that's what I'm tasting the IPA. Like I said... Um, if you don't know and you've never seen the show, I'm not a beer connoisseur. I don't know all the exact terms. I don't know the brewology of everything. I'm just a dude who likes to talk and likes to drink beers, and I talk about those beers. So if, um, well, if I don't seem too polished, if I don't seem like I know what the hell I'm talking about, it's probably because I don't. I'm just putting to you in very simple terms, this is what this beer tastes like. This is my review, my show, so there it is. Which then now brings me to the next point. <clears throat> if you aren't watching the Oscars, I was a little disappointed I didn't get called. Um, last year at this time for the Oscars, was <laughs> it was one of the funnest acting jobs I ever had. I don't know if you guys ever seen uh, Tim Hecticker and um, it's basically Tim and Eric. Um, I was on their Oscars live show. I don't think they they might not have done it this year. I don't know, but um, I was uh, I was on that show. I played the police officer on that show. If you uh, haven't seen it, it's probably somewhere there out in the YouTube world, whatever. Just type in 2019 Oscars live Oscar show with the Tim and Eric Comedy Central, and if you watch until the very end, there there it is. Travel Man Dan shows up, and um, a lot of fun, good stuff. Really enjoyed it, and I thought they would uh, call me again. Maybe we'll do something again one time. I would love to work with those guys. If you've ever seen Tim and Eric's uh, billion-dollar movie, it's more, one of the most ridiculous, hysterical, slapstick, craziest things I've ever seen in my life. And just saying the name, just saying the name, I'm, I'm laughing about it, and I was really happy to be a part of that and uh, work with those guys. But... You know, they got some thing. I think they're on a tour with a comedy a stand up show and stuff. So they didn't, they might not even have done the live Oscar show. But that's what I was doing this year. So every time the Oscars come up, it makes me think of that. Um, I, you know, you, you, won, you wouldn't think that I would be watching the Oscars being an actor. But, um, you know, my show's got to go on. So, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's most important to me. And I love all the award ceremonies i love the oscars i'm probably gonna watch it on replay as soon as we're done but i wanted to get this show in today so um we'll go ahead and save the spoilers if you have an idea who might win go ahead and put it down in the comments or you want to comment something about the oscars or if you just want to comment on anything at all anything please go ahead and throw it down in the comment section below and we're going to do a new thing on this show today. It's a really, um, I thought of it, it's not, well, I didn't think of it, but it, it happens a lot. It's, um, it's basically funny comments that come in to my channel about my, uh, about my videos. We're going to pick one a week, and we're going to talk about it on this show. So, <clears throat> yeah, I got a really good one for you later. But let's go ahead and segment into what I want to talk about was last week's video. Last week's video was a lot of fun. If you don't know the structure of my channel, it is like this. It's weekly videos come out every Wednesday and Sunday. And Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. Every other week, uh, the, the Travel Man Dan show comes out. And then every other Friday, the Food Friday show comes out. And then we go live. So, last week was the episode for the Travel Man Dan show. And it was really freaking cool, man. It was just Mm. The timing of it, the timing of it, probably if you saw the thumbnail or if you saw some kind of promotion out there in the, in the inner sphere, um, you're probably like, what the hell is this dude doing? Because what it was, it was an interview that I had done with another pretty big YouTuber called Simply Sherry. And if you haven't checked out her stuff, I'll go ahead and throw it up there right now. And um, you can check out her stuff. She is like a travel organizer and um, 
a preparer and, and someone that talks about organizational uh, ways to travel. And she had done an interview with me about six months ago at a conference for YouTubers that we did in Las Vegas. Now, we thought it would be cool because I have a lot of experience with China because I lived there for almost seven years and because I traveled there almost every year for movies and television. And we thought it would be a good idea back then to go ahead and, and talk about the three top tips to travel into China. So that was last week's Wednesday's video. But unless you're living under a rock and you don't pay attention to any news outlet or media and stuff, there's actually a really crazy... Uh, virus or something going on. I don't know what you call it, a pandemic, ep epidemic, I don't know, what it is, but it's a, definitely a virus. It's called the coronavirus and it's very, very dangerous. I pray every night that, I, you know, they, they're able to go ahead and, and fix this. I got lots of friends over there, hundreds of Chinese friends and, and foreigners and, and people that are dear to me. And, you know, China as a whole is taking a hit for this because it's a wonderful country, and that's what my video was about, was the three top tips about traveling to China, although the timing couldn't be any worse. So if you go ahead and check that out, be very careful and be mindful that I'm not suggesting for people to travel to China now. It's more for later, and we didn't know that this was going to happen. This outbreak happened in like mid-December. So if you do watch it, keep in mind, definitely travel to China and definitely take those tips into consideration but do it at a later time make sure that the epidemic or whatever it is the virus the, the coronavirus is completely taken care of um i don't know if anybody's uh remembers the, when the sars virus came out when the sars virus came out it was the same type of scare um i actually went over to china and stayed in guangzhou where the virus had, had started in panyu uh that's where i stayed like a year and a half after so everything turned out all right it's just that nowadays, like with anything, it's really, really hypersensitivity because back when SARS came out, we weren't really privy to everywhere you go, you're going to hear about it, you know, but traditional news outlets talked about it but nowadays you can turn on you know any app that you have any social media stuff that you look at anything that you uh, uh hear it's just everything's about the coronavirus and you just getting slammed with it so keep in mind be careful don't go to china right now wait until the government and the, and the, and the true officials say that it's okay to go but check out my video so last week I uh, did it with a, a YouTuber called Simply Sherry, and that's C H E R I E, and um, well, it just breaks it down. It's a really quick, you know, it's it's like a 15 minute video that I just talk about like all my experiences in China, and I make some tips and and some advice and some suggestions, not only about just traveling, but very specific about traveling to China. So I hope you get a chance to enjoy that video. If you do, go ahead and shoot it down in, in that video's comments and let me know what you liked about it. I'd love to hear from you. You guys are my everything. Without you guys, without my community, I'd be nothing, man. I'd just be, you know, the struggling artist that I am. So um, this outlet, this community, allowing me to talk to you guys through comments, through live, through... Um, just association on YouTube. Thank you. You guys are really making it happen for me. And uh, I thank you for that. And well, this swig's for you. Here we are. This is what we're drinking. The Ballast Point Manta Ray Double IPA. It's too, it's too damn smooth. I mean, now that it's warmed up a little bit, it's even smoother. Okay. I probably could have swag it. Swag it? Swag it. Swag it, swigged it. I could have swigged it down in three swigs, but I didn't. Um, it's just ultra smooth, okay? Double IPA probably packs a lot more calories than your Michelob, but same model. Ultra smooth, 8.5%. You definitely starting to feel it a little bit. You can tell in the beginning of my videos where I'm kind of a little choppy and then I started a little bit slurring and whatever. It's just a beer, folks. I'm fine. I'm fine. All right, so now we talked a little bit about the Oscars. We talked a little bit about USA, USA. Yo, USA women's national team are amazing. Freaking love you girls, man. 
Man, all right. So next thing, we're well, sticking with sports. Anybody happen to see the UFC? I think it was 247 last night. What would you guys think? Um, I'm be honest. I, uh, I, 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 I'm going with the consensus of they screwed it up. I think the judges got it wrong. I think Dominic Reyes beat John Jones. I mean, he was putting him to it. I mean, the fourth and the fifth round, I think definitely Jones had won. Um, but, excuse me a minute there, guys. But I definitely think that, um, I, I think that uh, Dominic Reyes did enough in the first three rounds. And I, like, he, like he said at the a press conference, the takedowns that he endured were not uh, where they were. They didn't really hold them up to the point where they should have been. I'm not even making any sense because I'm people are texting me. But put it this way: a knock, a, a significant takedown. Yes, it was, but I, I don't think they held him down. They didn't do much. He was able to pop back up. I really think Dominic Reyes got robbed. Now, I love John Jones as a fighter. I think he's awesome. He's one of my favorite. I've been following him since uh, since the 12 to 6 on Hamill. You know what I mean? Um, but um, he's from Endicott, which is uh, uh, Rochester, New York. So he's kind of local. He's kind of hometown guy. Always got much love for him. But I just think he lost. I do. I do. I think he lost. I, I it's uh, very subjective, the fighting and the rounds. Especially that the one guy gave him like 49 to 46. What you talking about? You know what I mean? Like, whew. so well, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna finish this last swig of Manta Ray, and be in the home state of Dominic Reyes. I salute you, brother. First of all, both of you guys, John Jones are a great champion. You did find a way to win, and you know, I'm not a professional fighter. I'm not a professional judge, so I don't really know. I'm just telling you with the eyeball test what I personally thought. If you think Dom won, or if you think John Jones won, let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. But this this uh, California brew and point and score is going to be going. Uh, this last swig is uh, dedicated to that fight and Dominic Reyes. So let's go ahead and finish this uh, Manta Ray out. I'll give it a score, and we'll hop into the other beer. Wow. Delicious. Really, really delicious. I mean, I got to give it up for... Here we got. <laughs> Don't you love it when you get a text from somebody from like three months ago? I love it, man. I, it's, you know, sometimes you just get lost in the in the shuffle. So that's what happened. That is my friend, and it was good to hear from him. I uh, hope all is good with him, too. I'll answer that later. That's the fun thing about the live show. So, the manta ray was delicious. Really smooth. That is the number one takeaway. If you're looking for a smooth, strong beer, I suggest you go with the manta ray. Excuse me. Okay, this is live, so you gotta, you got to see some burps. If you don't like burps, well, tough. Um, all right, so what I'm going to say is this. And this is a bold statement. This IPA, and I love IPAs. I like them all different ways. <laughs> I like the red ones, I like the blonde ones, I like the brown ones, and I like the black ones. They're all delicious. But I want to say one thing about this ballast point mantra, man, manta ray. Manta ray. I can't, I'm saying mantra, I don't know why. This is my favorite freaking IPA that I've ever tasted. That's right. I went ahead and I bolded you. I gave you a bold statement. This right here is a phenomenal IPA. Really, really impressed with Ballast Point and what they bring to the table. And Manta Ray is my favorite IPA. All right, there it is. So with that being said, I'm going to give it one of the highest scores ever recorded on weekly beer and video review show with Danny Soleil. And that score is 9.5. 9.5, guys. Walking into this, I didn't know. Son of a.
You know what I'm going to say. All right, guys, we're going to speed things up because this happened last week and it drove me freaking crazy. We're having some technical issues here at the Travel Man Dan Studio, but don't worry. Hopefully, they will fix it. I'm going to give it a 9.5, the Manta Ray IPA, double IPA, double IPA, 8.5%. Scores a 9.5. Huge. Huge. All right. Now, without further ado, let's bring in his friend, his cousin, his buddy, his confidant, the guy in the corner that he knows. He knows a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy. And here it is. Folks, I'm bringing in the Ballast Point Grapefruit Sculpting IPA. It is a grapefruit drink. It is grapefruit. If you remember my beer that I tried a few months ago, the Rhodey out of Denver, Colorado, that was a delicious grapefruit beer. So this one's got some, uh, well, it's got some living up to do. Not only if it's got this right here, this may be my favorite beer, my favorite brewery. One of the times, you know, the last 12 pack that I bought and I showcased the beers here on Weekly Beer and Video Review Show with Danny Slay was the Kona Brewing Company out of Kona, Hawaii. Is that what they do? Hang 10, dude. I don't know. Freaking love Hawaiians, man, by the way. Um, and now they're getting a run for their money against Ballast Point. So this is... The ballast point. Well, check it out. Okay, if you don't know what a sculpting fish is, because I don't know what it is, but check it out. That's what it looks like. Okay, that looks like so much to have a tat of it right here, or right here. Like, what's that? That's a sculpting fish, dude. That's a that's my sculpting fish, dude. Sculpting fish in your face. All right, pretty awesome artwork on the label. Let's see what this IPA registers at seven percent. So it's definitely another strong one. Danny Slay is going to go bzzz. coffee. Should I get nah. later? Later, we're here. Let's go ahead. Let's crack it open. Um, ooh, right away. Smell that. That is nice. Oh, that's nice. That is really good. Nice, flavorful, fruity smell wafting in my face as I crack open this bottle cap. Really good. And this is, check out the bottle cap. This is really cool. I don't know if you've ever seen Ballast Point bottle cap before. That's, that's pretty neat. I don't know. It's the simple things I like. Just the simple things. All right, so right away, the Ballast Point Grapefruit Sculpting Al. It's got an awesome label. Great smell to it coming out of the bottle. Let's see how it tastes. Wow. It's, it's as if I was transported to the Sunkist Brewery. Wow. Everything is more clear. It's more citrusy. Vitamin C-ish. Wow. Whew. What a vibrant little blast that was. Delicious. First sip of the sculpting. Boom. Hits you with a little bit of healthiness. You, as you drink it, you feel like it's 7 a.m. And you just checked into your local diner. And you asked for a freshly squeezed grapefruit juice. Because my name is Tomer. But no, it isn't. This is a beer. This is a 7 percenter. Made in San Diego. Delicious first taste. Loving the ballast point. Got a little bit of the burpsy. This really sucks this really sucks and if you're with me still thank you all right so i want to talk about something real quick i don't get product sponsorship i just want to go ahead and tell you guys a little bit about this i'm going to go ahead and throw this in the link anyway i think because you know i'm a smaller channel i get it you know and uh well i got a long way to go before well, the thing is, is I don't even know if I want to be that thing, you know? Whoever's watching me, if you're into this, thank you. Because I'm going with one-on-one. -on -one. But what I'm about to talk to you guys about now is product, is, is a specific product. And I'm not being a sponsor. I would love for them to be able to give me some money to go ahead and promote it some more. Because I genuinely 
absolutely freaking love this product, all right? And I want to share it with you guys. I'm not getting paid. I don't know if this is stupid or smart or whatever. I don't I'm basically putting it out there, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this particular product and tell you guys about it. Don't get paid for it. You know it would be great? If I got paid for these products, like the beer and the, what I'm about to show you and all this kind of thing. And all I had to do was worry about the Danny Soleil channel. Shows like Travel Man Dan and Food Friday and Weekly. I mean, <clears throat> can you say, Homer, yo, 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 Mr. D. <laughs> Some of that. <laughs> all right, anyway, we're getting off on a little bit of a tangent. So what I'm about to show you is something that I purchased about a week ago. No, two weeks ago. And I freaking love it, man. I love it. I use it about 15 minutes every night. I like to train. I like to exercise. I definitely feel in shape. A guy still cocked the face and, <laughs> you know, and get a rude awakening. But uh, I still feel pretty good. And that has to do with my alignment with my mind, body, muscle kind of thing. But I'll be honest with you. I get sore. I get tired. My muscles cramp up. All this kind of stuff. If you exercise, if you slam weights, dude, if you do some shit like that, bro, you know what I mean? You're going to get some stiff muscles from time to time. So, I invested into a massage gun. Check this guy out, man. This thing is freaking awesome. All right, this is the massage gun I checked out. It is... Now, here's the part that gets tricky. So, hopefully they'll see it. Maybe they'll offer me a brand sponsorship. Probably not, but maybe. Just maybe. It is by Apollo Kinetics, okay? I'm not sure what it is, but check this out. This guy right here, okay? You can see the green, I'm still, I guess still got some power left, all right? There's four little lights. I'm down to two. You can't really see it, okay? Really heavy, okay? But not too heavy. Notice... It doesn't have moving parts. Sometimes you see these massage guns and they have those like three angles. And those can be um, those can be tricky because you can break those. And the more moving mechanical parts you have of anything, not just a massage gun, but of anything, can be detrimental to your wallet because you might have to buy it again. But here it is. All right. It comes with four different... Uh, nodules or four different things check this one out this one right here no we're not kicking field goals it goes in there just just like that really simple okay and it's for your spine okay all the way up and down your back spine okay so sometimes around your spine area the muscles get really tight and, Ooh, we got a short back and I can't move <laughs> use this sucker you're gonna feel amazing okay all right now, here we go. We got the traditional ball, all right? We just go ahead and pop that in there, okay? And the ball is really good when you're working around bigger muscle groups that you can go ahead and target. Sometimes I like to, you know, just cross over. I like to cross down in here, down and through the neck muscles, right across the chest. That one's really good, okay? Another muscle group a big muscle group thing is the flatter okay the squasher now the squasher is crazy because you think this is for big muscle groups like your quads and your hamstrings and things like this but the the, the best place that i like to use the squasher is on my cheekbone my uh, tmj like along here on my face and around my temple okay strange right i don't know but that's what i like okay and um here is the one that I use the most. This is the pinpointer, okay? Kind of looks like, uh, well, <laughs> this is a kid's show. This is a kid's show. You know what I'm talking about. But, um, but yeah, this thing right here, you can drive it into, say you have like a specific point that you, um, you're not, you, you, is, is tight and it's, it, it's giving you kind of some discomfort. You can go specifically right in there and, and just, and I'm going to show you the different speeds. Okay, so. Got the slicker turned on. Now we're gonna give it a couple speeds. All right, so we see and listen to it. Apollo Kinetics. All right, so this is, this is an, oh man, this feels good. All right, every time. All right, so this is the first speed, okay? Like I said, I like it like that. Work the chest. Now you just click on it again. Listen to it, you can tell it gets a little bit more. 
all right? I like to work these trap muscles right here because, you know, let's be honest, just everyday life can kind of keep you hunched over or your neck's forward, kind of got a big head, my hair is growing in, so maybe it gets a little heavy. But right here, it gets tense, right? You get tense, and you get, ah, you, you, right here. Now, I'm gonna kick it up to the third button, okay? Just punch it the third time, see the three green lights? And this sucker is humming, listen to it. But, I wanna point out too, Apollo Connects does a nice job because some of those other ones are so freaking loud that it's hard to even concentrate. And right here is where I like to work, right? Because everyone likes to be massaged on their neck, okay? If you go into the back area, you can really target that area. Getting a good massage. Now keep in mind, if you got somebody else, a significant other, um, Danny Soleil, AKA Travel Man Dan does not. So uh, I'm kind of left high and dry and I'm uh, not really doing, um, I have to work on myself, but it's still very effective. But if you got somebody else, they can go ahead and they can drive this sucker right into you like they're nailing nails into a two by four. It's actually your muscle and well, Check it out, guys. I'll go ahead and I'm gonna look into it and see if I can't put the link in the description below. I'm not sure if uh, if they'll go ahead and give me anything, but you definitely want to get it. This get something like this. But my suggestion is this Apollo Kinetics. I've used it every day, pretty much 15 minutes on one charge. It's quality. Three other people I know have already bought one. It comes in this really cool bag. Okay, really cool like carrying case, so you can keep in your backpack. And the cool thing about it is all those different heads you can put on there because you know sometimes you have some tightness along your spine sometimes you have some some tightness in the pecs sometimes you want to just hit your whole quadriceps your it band thing is great thing is excellent definitely get it and here's the best thing it's like a hundred bucks now i'm not sure what your budget is you know um Mine's not that high. I gotta be honest with you. I'm not. I'm not rich. You know what I mean. But I was able to afford it, and I'm able to use it, and it's helped out so much. All right, let's get back into this grapefruit sculpting IPA. Since we're talking fitness, let's talk about vitamin C. Wow. I mean, the beer people, the people that make beer, they must know something. That I don't because typically when you um, when you mix fruit with beer it's not good um, I remember drinking these French like kind of I don't know what the hell they're called my boy Nate loves them they're like carbonated French beers whatever they're super strong but they were always berry tasting and they're not good but something about the grapefruit IPA something about the taste of the IPA the of the hoppiness the overwhelming kind of piney taste mixed with that citrus citrus taste of grapefruit they must know something about it because it works brilliant it's really smooth ballast point you're about to give kona a freaking run for its money it is a dual i'm gonna have to bring this one back because kona and ballast are some of the amazing micro brews or craft beers whatever the hell you want to call it that are really just coming with some quality products and this sculpting is great grapefruit i know grapefruit and beer sounds gross but no it's not it's delicious you're gonna love it make sure you try it out i'm gonna go ahead and keep talking I'll finish this off I'll give you a score and let you know how we feel about the ballast point the next thing I want to talk about is this week right because that's what we do on the weekly beer and video review show with Danny Soleil we talk about the week's last video and the week coming up we already talked about last week's video now I want to talk about this week's video this week's video is a food Friday video <clears throat> Do, 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 do. We're back, guys. Thanks again. I'm gonna speed this up because I don't want what happened last week to happen again this week. So I was talking about this week's video, and well, yes, going into restaurants and going to sit down and eating fine cuisine is bellissimo. I love it. I absolutely love it. But I'm a one-man crew, and there's things out there that other people want to know about. For instance, people from all over the world. 
India to Venezuela to um, well even parts of Canada that are unfamiliar with the United States want to know about fast food so that's why I do a lot of fast food restaurants in my truck is because I want to go ahead and just show the world um, well you always hear America you know or USA and they scoff at like how uh, obese we are and how much of a problem we have with fast food and the drive through culture and yada 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 and well you're absolutely right can't deny that you know you're a hundred percent right but that is part of our culture and me and all my friends and everybody I know has always been associated with well being able to go to any drive through here in America and see the thing about traveling that's cool and that's great is things are different and sometimes when you're out in the world, like for instance, when I was in China, the only fast food restaurants you could actually see were McDonald's and KFC, and Starbucks if that counts. And then they also had a Burger King, with then later had a Taco Bell. But I like to show all the cool places and all the fast food restaurants of America. So then going forward this year, what I like to do is go ahead and show you like a, a restaurant, like sitting down in a restaurant. And then logistically, you got to understand that sometimes for Food Friday, it's not the easiest thing to get a restaurant to come and allow you to come in there and film. Okay? So, it's really easy for me to go ahead and, um, well, go into a, a drive through fast food restaurant, pick it up because they won't let you go film inside, and do it in my car. So, every other month, I like to switch it up. And that kind of will cover my basis to show all the American fast food restaurant. Because it's one thing to talk shit. And you can talk shit all you want. You can talk about Americans. You can talk about this and that. But if you don't know, then you don't know. Okay? So, I feel like making these fast food videos in my car. Hey. <clears throat> And we're back. So the technical difficulties really suck and I'm going to speed this thing up. So it's just one of those things that I want to go ahead and show. So stay tuned for this upcoming Food Friday as I bring you some type of fast food restaurant. Not only, well, maybe you're American and you know exactly what I'm talking about, but also it's different in different regions of the states. You might be in the south and be like, you know what, I've never seen that before in California etc 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 so i hope that you enjoy it eventually once i go and travel worldwide and keep going and stuff i'm going to be diving more into restaurants and getting into really cool places but let's be honest american culture is fast food why not show it to the world let's bring it and um well that's what's coming up this friday i don't have a place selected yet so stay tuned it's a, gonna be a surprise but it should be good all right i'm gonna go back into the sculpin. Now I'm going to go about to my next section, which is called, what are you reading? What are you watching? Man, that's good. Right away. I don't even taste beer on that. I just taste a pull of like, if somebody took a grapefruit and I bit into the grapefruit and got a squirt of grapefruit. Really delicious, nice tasting, and it's an overall strong beer. And if you know Ballast Point, you know they come with it, man. I gave their other one, the Manta Ray. I gave the double IPA a score of 9.5. That's pushing on the Molson Canadian. That's almost getting to the perfect score of 10, which was only done once in its entirety on the weekly beer and video review show with Danny Soleil. And that was the Labatt Blue. So let's keep on going. What are you reading? What are you watching segment? That's what I want to talk about. And, well, this is what... I'm reading Save the Cat, okay? Save the Cat. You're like, what the hell is that? Save the Cat is a, is a really good acting writer's book, okay? If you want to understand acting and if you want to understand um, how to get better as an actor, these are things that you can learn just right here because Save the Cat is actually a book written for writers who write screenplays. But as an actor, who, who writes the roles for an actor well a screenwriter and if you understand from their perspective is a 12 step okay is 12 step is um it is essential that you know these 12 steps and it's funny because i read this book twice this is the third time reading it over and i'll be honest i'm not reading it front to back i'm skimming it and stuff like that and i have a great coach 
David Tree at the LA um, Acting Studios here in Los Angeles. Great coach. I mean, the guy, you may may or not know him, but the thing about David that I like um, is David is exact. He is perfect in what he's talking about. He's very specific uh, details, and he knows what the shit he's talking about because he's a writer, he's a director, he's an, he was an actor himself, and um, this is this is the blueprint there's 12 steps in here if you want to become an actor these are the steps that you should probably know because these are the writer steps so the writers specifically write scenes according for I mean for actors so uh, actors understand according to what the writer is writing they'll have a better concept of where that character is going so really important I always like to brush up on this book somehow some way i always find myself at the beginning of the year reading this stuff and um really good because it's right around the oscars and i feel inspired and uh, i'm gonna go ahead and watch the uh, replay right after this live video but um but yeah save the cat it is by blake snyder and um it is said that like i don't know it i don't know this exact statistics so please don't hit me in the comments below don't butcher me but i would say Something like 50% of the screenplays that are written in Hollywood, like movies that you see, are based off of the format and the template written in this book, which is awesome. As an actor myself, like, that's invaluable. And then when I met with uh, Coach Roundtree, David, I mean, he was able to break it down and, like, like it is heady, some stuff. This stuff... If you're just out there and you're not really, you don't have that mentor or teacher, you probably won't understand it fully. I don't know, some of you guys might, but but it's a really good book. Check it out, Blake Snyder, Save the Cat. And if you want to be a writer, actor, director, whatever, I definitely suggest having this in your arsenal. Hi. No. I freaking, this thing is freaking pissing me off man it's really pissing me off oh hey <laughs> so, yeah. bad connection we're back um so like i said sticking to what are you watching we're gonna stick with hollywood and what am i watching i'm watching watching one of my favorite actors guy who was recently passed away he passed away last week at 103 his name is kirk douglas and if you've seen his movies you know what i'm talking about guy was a hollywood icon he has a son um michael douglas i mean just the, the guy is phenomenal i mean the guy was amazing he was in one of my favorite movies one of my favorite books that became one of my favorite movies and it was Twenty Thousand leagues under the sea love it love it but what i'm actually watching is called the way west and um, it's Kirk Douglas, and um, he's uh, he's basically a pioneer crossing across America. You need to check it out. It's really fun. I got through half of it, and um, it's just I love all that old school, like Hollywood, before all the bells and whistles and the actions and the Marvel stuff and all the CGI. I like that stuff too, and and trust me, I really like it. And I would take it in a minute. But there's something to be said about the period of the 1930s to the 1970s as an actor. It was it's, um, it was so pure in form of on film. Like, obviously, the, the, the median of an actor is, is the stage, right? It doesn't get any better than that. It's, that's how you're measured, how good you are on stage. But you got to tone it down when you're on a film. So I, I just really enjoy all this old black and white. And, and Kirk Douglas was like... He was, he was legendary, man. He was freaking, the guy had, what, 40 plus years in this business? You know, I'll be lucky if I carve out 10 and I'll be happy with it. I'll be happy with a 10 year career in Hollywood. You know, now I'm just perfecting my craft. But that guy was, man. So that's what I'm watching. It's called The Way West. It's an amazing movie. It's really cool. Um, just to see it's not a period piece right we watch these movies now and they're like our television shows now and they're a period piece because we're going back it was made back then i guess it was made back in the, the wild west to, to look like the early 1800s but just really great and um i love and appreciate kirk douglas rest in peace and uh well 
how about a sip of Sculpting? That's all I can do. This uh, Sculpting IPA is for you, Kirk Douglas. All right. Still delicious grapefruit tanginess. Really tasty, delicious flavor. And I'm loving it. Now, I'm going to go to this new segment. And uh, this is, uh, well, it's kind of like... You know when they read mean tweets and all kinds of funny stuff like that? This is, I'm going to go ahead and highlight a comment that I, somebody puts on my YouTube throughout the week. And I'll go ahead and highlight them. And I got one of the funniest comments <laughs> I think I've ever seen. And uh, let, me go, let me go to it now. Unfortunately, they erased it. I don't know why they erased it. I reached out to them and said, hey, because they left two comments. But this one was really funny. And this one is brought to us by aim Sophis. aim Sophis. okay and he went to my vilness uh lithuania video and he commented you are a stud might have a future in porn or infomercials <laughs> hey it's travel man dan here with flex steel <laughs> <laughs> this guy this guy is great dude check him out man i don't know if you guys can see it but that i went to go comment back to him and i wasn't fast enough i don't know if people get like cold feet or they worry about it or whatever listen we're out here i'm in the game i understand i don't like comments that criticize and like degrade me as a person but you can say all you want about my videos and channels that's the game right um you know, you don't know me, so be careful with that. You know, I, I probably just won't respond. I don't particularly like political stuff, and I particularly don't like religious stuff. And when you a travel channel, uh, if you talk about, like, other countries and stuff, I probably won't even acknowledge you if you talk in a bad light because you probably don't know. But this guy, he said, first of all, he called me a stud. Thanks, dude. Or, or do that. <laughs> and second of all, he said I got a, a career in porno. <laughs> I could never do porno. My mother would kill me. Um, and, and then lastly, he said, one thing I would love to do is be a pitch man for an infomercial. Last time we're using this one. <laughs> Yo, that guy hit the nail on the head. Whoever you are, I reached out to you. Thank you so much. So please, whatever comment you put down below, hopefully you'll be highlighted here on the show every week because I'm going to pick the best one, the one that resonates with me, the one that I think is funny, is good, is awesome, and all that good stuff. We got one more swig left of the Ballast Point Sculpting IPA. I'm going to drop a quote of the week and we're out of here. All right, here we go. It's like I'm drinking juice. I gotta say, Ballast Point, can we please do something together? Who's gonna be my first beer company that wants to do something with me? Really great, unbelievable. One more time, from the label, okay, to the great taste, and you can taste how, well, how grapefruity it is. It's got a smooth aftertaste. Got a little bit of a kick. It is a 7.0%. It's a 7%er, so it's definitely strong. It's a it's a healthy IPA. And just like all the other beers in the Ballast Point Arsenal, this one holds just as much water and just as much weight and goodness. Delicious overall flavor. And I'm going to land it in there at an 8.5. That's right, an 8.5. The only reason I'm giving it a little bit less than the other one is because the other one, this one right here, the Manta Ray, was freaking spectacular. But this one, you can never go wrong. Can you drink eight of them? I don't know. Maybe your Steve will do it, but I couldn't. This one is strong, it's delicious, and I absolutely loved it. Ballast Point, way to go. You hit a couple grand slammers tonight. So that was the beers. That was the talk. That was the discussion. Now we'd like to end the weekly beer and video review show with Danny Slay with a quote of the week. All right. We talked a little bit about movies and about superheroes and Marvel and everything. 
And here's the quote of the week, and I want you to tune into this and listen to this. No matter who you are, where you are, and when you're doing it, listen to this and listen to me well, because I'm going to tell you exactly how it is. And this is an unknown quote. It comes from I don't know who, but it should hold dearly to your heart because it's so true to each and every one of us because there's so much pressures out there. And somebody that's like a guy on the internet or whatever, even if you're not, you're just, you're still on the internet and you feel all these pressures of, of what you should be and what you should be doing and how you should do it and how you should be doing it. It's all a bunch of bullshit, okay? You're exactly perfect the way you are and what you're doing. Now, if you're a criminal and you're doing some kind of CD kind of underground stuff, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the people that maybe doubt themselves, have some insecurity. I mean, we all do, right? We all have this. And so, this is the quote. No one is you. No one is you. And that is your superpower. Okay? Listen to that. No one is you. There's not a single solitary person, man, woman, on this planet that is you. And that is your superpower. That is so freaking special. All right, I'm not gonna get into some kind of crazy whimsical talk and this and that. This is fr All right, so I'm back. And, and this is for real. This is really, really dear to everybody. Everybody thinks that like, what they see on the internet or what they see throughout their feed is comparable to you. And it's not. You're your own person, okay? And I want people to understand that, um, that no one is you, and that is your superpower. You have absolute control of who you are and what you do and why you do it. And the reason, nobody else has to understand it, but if you do it and you do it well, and you do it and you represent yourself, that is so powerful because you never know when you're going to inspire somebody. And inspiring somebody is just the spawn of your inspiration or somebody else's inspiration onto them. Because once again, them taking your inspiration, taking it into them, then carries on to what they are. And they're their own entity. They're their own person. They're their own, that they have their own superpower, each individual. And we live at such a special great time that everybody focuses in on all this negativity and like whatever um you you know this that and the other thing on social media and things like that but the reality is we have so much power to connect to other people from and show people who we are as people so let's take that and let's be optimistic let's let's be a positive force in people's lives and understand that that is a special superpower that you are the one and only. Hope you enjoyed it. That's my take on this quote of the week. Thanks for hanging with us. If you, Thanks for hanging with me. If you like my show and you like what I'm doing, go ahead and hit that sub button, ring the bell, leave me a comment, do all that good stuff. I'm going to throw it down in the link below, a merchandise link. If you want to go ahead and support my channel, you can go ahead and buy uh, Travel Man Dan show shirts hoodies socks coffee mugs and the same with our food friday thanks a lot for watching i'm travel man dan and remember it's a big world out there make sure you see every bit of it